Hello, welcome back to Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley on YouTube. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmy, and this is another video in our series on Welsh country churches. It's turned into Welsh country churches just because they're the ones that are open and they're the ones I've been able to visit. Um, this is uh, Bryn Eglois. It's literally church brow would be a fairly straightforward English translation, the church on the brow of the hill. And this is a good place to talk about evangelicals in Wales. Some people are going, what about evangelicals? What about the, the Methodists? Well, this is a good place to talk about the Methodists. First of all, Welsh Methodism is different from English Methodism. Methodism originally, as a term, simply meant evangelical. It meant somebody who was, well, certainly we today would call, would use the word evangelical where the 18th century used the word Methodist. And a Methodist was somebody who was serious about Christianity. They were originally a party in the Church of England, and there was a division within the Methodists between the Calvinists and the Arminians. In England, the term Methodist today implies an Arminian, but in Wales it doesn't. Methodist, Calviniath, Calvinistic Methodist is the, name, is the official name, the original name of the Presbyterian Church in Wales. You can still see churches today with that name, Calvinistic Methodist. Well, in this church, a Calvinistic Methodist preached, a friend of uh, Thomas Charles Baller. In fact, Thomas Charles preached here at least once. And it was a very difficult life for an evangelical because they tended to be from a poorer end of society, tended not to be gentlemen in the same way. They, if they were gentlemen, they were gentlemen of a, a lower order. And, of course, they, when they were Welsh, they were looked down on by the English simply for being Welsh and having their own language. Um, we look at that today as... And, quite rightly we see it as a very wrong attitude, but back in the 18th century, Welsh, speaking Welsh was seen as something that showed you were a bit lower than the English. Um, prejudice is an awful thing. But the Welsh churches often were very poor. We've seen these little Welsh churches, and you notice how the Welsh country church is generally smaller than the English. The little Welsh churches are so very, very tiny. This is a reasonable size one. It's a bit like uh, Derwin in terms of size. And you can see, again, the, this simplicity. Now, the Welsh parishes tend to be fairly poor. So you'd get the gentlemen vicars, they would, the, or the, the, the people who sort themselves as real gentlemen, would have multiple parishes. And they had the income from all of them, so they could live in some style in their big parsonage, wherever it was. And they would leave the day-to-day -day work of most of the parishes to curates, junior clergy, who would do the day-to-day -day grunt work, as it were. And the curate would lodge with a family or rent a little cottage. Curates were underpaid, undernourished. Um, they were still, most of them, graduates. They might be graduates from a Welsh school, the Presbyterian College in Carmarthen, actually trained Anglican clergymen as well as Presbyterians and independents. Um, and Thomas Charles went there before he went off then to Oxford. And then he came back to Wales and was looking for a curacy. And one of his friends, Mr. Jones, was the curate here and was eventually shut out because he was an evangelical. He was a Methodist. We don't want the Methodists here, they said. It's a lovely little church, and there are some evidence here of... Uh, the 18th century and the Methodists. But let's have a look around. It's notable that this is in the parish of Yale. Yes, that Yale, the Yale family. Elihu Yale came from North Wales and because he gives his name to the school in the United States. So let's have a look around and explore this little church. We start here at the back looking east again, you can see a lovely medieval ceiling. And as at uh, Llanelidon, there is a, a roof here. That as at Llanelidon, there is a wooden ceiling over the chancel, emphasizing that. Now, would there have been, a, there would have been a screen here. It would have been here where the, where the pulpit is now. And you can see this is an L-shaped building because there is an aisle built on just at the east end. And that's the Yale Isle for the Yale family. We have here at the back a nice window, an early 20th century, Christ appearing to the apostles at the Sea of Galilee. When the morning was come, Jesus stood 
on the shore. And here we have uh, something interesting. To the glory of God, this hydroelectric power plant was built and installed during the year 1926 for providing the church and the vicar of the electric light and was dedicated by His Grace the Archbishop of Wales on Sunday, January the 3rd, 1927, when the current was formally switched on by Mrs. Edwards of the Palace St. Asaph. The heating apparatus was also installed the same year, and we're told that the vicar then was the Reverend David Williams, B.A., I presume David, um, D. Williams. So the first electricity in the, in the village was installed here and at the vicarage. The font is a very interesting sort of neoclassical one. You can see these uh, winged putty, half putty sticking out with their little wings, and the, the bowl in the middle, there's a nice veined marble bowl in the middle. Um, the benches are very simple, 19th century. The pulpit is 17th century, and so this is, we know, this is where Thomas Charles would have preached when he visited here. And you can see there the remains of the oil lamp. We have a, an, an, one of those nice 18th century memorials. You can just see through there the vestry built on the back. The choir stalls are 17th century. We have the date there. 1613. Um, in the middle we have OM, which I presume to be, or OTM even, which I presume to be the initial of the church warden had it installed. So you have a massive oak timbers supporting the roof there over the Yale Isle. And the east window, faith, hope, and charity. Faith, by faith, Abraham prepared to offer up his son Isaac, believing he would receive him again. He believed in the resurrection of the dead. Hope, the wise men following the star with their certainty that at the end of it was the Messiah, was the one born king of the Jews. Charity, love, Christian love, which one the neighbor, the good Samaritan. And again, it's a memorial window. You can't see whose it's to. I can't see it's to because there's the, um, that is in the way. But it's 18, 1870, it's a high Victorian. Here is an interesting memorial because it's bilingual. At uh, the top is the Welsh and at the bottom is the English. So David, as it, what could, can, there's two, David Thelwall, erected by his father Watkin, uh, who was buried in 1760, age 69. Also his mother, Mary Thelwall, who was buried September 20th, 1793, age 92 years, both interred in the family vault in the chancel. This is an Eisteddford chair. The Eisteddford is a, a Welsh cultural movement, or the Eisteddford movement. Um, it's caused some confusion to certain American evangelicals when... Uh, particularly American evangelicals, but, but some who were overly influenced by American who were not American. Um, when a bishop, uh, Archbishop Williams, Rowan Williams, was installed because they wear these robes, they oh, you know, neo paganism. No, it's a cultural thing, and a lot, and most of the people who founded the movement were actually Christians. Um, it's very simple candlesticks and cross. If you have a church open, unfortunately, all the possibility is someone's going to steal stuff, which is just awful. Um, looking west, you can see the bell rope there, single bell to summon the people, and the royal arms of King George III with the arms of Hanover in the middle. And you notice also the Irish harp. Um, England, three lions, of course. Scotland, the single lion, the red lion. And in the middle, there's the arms of Hanover because they were Hanoverians, the electors of Hanover. And the pulpit, I suspect it's been moved and partially cut down to um, produce its current shape, which is fine. Um, modern electric piano there, and there's an old harmonium. There's a model of the church showing it whitewashed, which it would have been, of course, originally. Um, and here we are in the Yale Isle. It's been, been cleared of pews now. It's a, a location for, it's a flexible space that can be used for food and drink after services, etc. And perfect. here, this is the entrance, I suspect, to the family vault. There's only one reason I know to have a couple of stone slabs here, and that says a family vault underneath. Um, and here we are, the Yale Isle. First, the Yale Memorials here. 
is actually one of, that we come through. Actually, one of the last. It's Sir John Corbett Love Yale, Lieutenant Colonel Royal Artillery, eldest son of Colonel James Corbett and Violet Yale, born 14th December 1897, killed in action Hong Kong 20th December 1941. So it's early stage of the war with Japan. He had gone out there as ex expecting basically that it would be quite straightforward and um, just wait out the war. But instead, the Japanese attacked and he was killed. Another Yale who died, this one in South Africa, is commemorated here. John Edward Ivor Yale of Plas and Yale, born 20th of August 1857, died. 23rd of April, 1896, in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, where his body lies buried. But the child, let's have little children to come unto me, the child is based on a, a childhood photograph, one suspects, of him. It's certainly based on a real person, that face. It's so different from the idealised Jesus face. And um, Here we have William Parry Yale, Lieutenant Colonel William Parry Yale, of the 48th Regiment of Plassen Yale, and he fought in the Peninsula Campaign with Wellington, again, against Napoleon. It was a, a brutal campaign in the, of course, the Iberian Peninsula. He was severely wounded there. His horse shot from under him, received the gold medal, war medal, High Sheriff of Denbyshire, active magistrate, faithful and diligent in the discharge of private, no less than public duties. He added to the high and noble qualities of a soldier those graces which adorn the Christian. So he died in 1867. The graces that adorn the Christian, faith, meekness, temperance, patience, beneficence, charity, in every social and domestic relation, sincere and without offence, conspicuous for unvarying cheerfulness, kindly affectionate disposition, and thrice happy temper, Honoured, loved, lamented, he being dead, yet speaketh. Um, it's quite different from a, an 18th century memorial, or one from just 20, 30 years earlier, which would have been all about uh, what a wonderful chap he was um, and how his temper made him, made him fit for something or other. And here we have the Reverend John Yale. Um, his memorial, we've got Hope up there as an allegorical figure, which is a little bit pagan, um, given her scanty draperies, shall we say. But you can see the anchor behind her, that's definitely Hope, um, who died on the 16th of September, 1789, aged 73 years. Also, Francis, relic of the above, who died on the 16th of February, 1790, was it the 10th? Uh, hard to tell, it's a bit warmer. 1796, aged 78 years. Edward Yale, Esquire, son of the above, died 13th of August, 1787, aged 39 years, the Reverend J. Yale, son of John and Francis Yale, who died 20th of April, 1800, at age 54 years. Sarah Yale, daughter of John and Francis Yale, died 13th of June, of June 1821, aged 67 years. Agreeable to her request, this morning was erected the memory of her brother, uh, her brothers and parents. So it's, this is her memorial for the family. And you see the Yale arms there at the bottom. Um, here we are with the... The chance you see, Yales had a good view of what mattered when they were sat in their pew. They could see the pulpit, they could see the communion table. The minister would be able to look, to look at them, and he would certainly be tempted to do so. So we pass out, you see here the, uh, the lovely floor tiles, and again, these beautiful, beautiful choir stalls, and that lovely font at the back, um, and the, the single bell rope. So let's proceed outside and have a look around. So we're now outside Bryn Eglois. You can see here the Yale Isle, the, the porch, which has a separate door for the Yales, um, so they could proceed directly to that aisle, which actually makes a lot of sense if you've got a, a porch in that position. Uh, carry on around here. You can see here why it's Bryn Eglois Church on the Brow. Um, it is a round graveyard, a good sign of an old flan site. Recently mown, when I arrived it was being mown in fact. And there's the west end, very plain, simple, single bell in the bell cot. 
this is again medieval um, the date would appear to be 15th century it generally is in this part of the world if you got to certainly this this style but it's very difficult to date in some respects because they're so plain it's such a plain building and i'm not saying that as a, an insult it's a it's a lovely thing to see a, pl a very plain little building and here we have here we are on the brow of the hill and we can look down at the valley and but the hills and reflect the Yales used to own all this um, and the little church where they would come and the folk would come to worship yes it, it, it does does feel very 15th century and it's even retained your you can see one of the windows there the one by the vestry appears to be original so because of its plainness the later ones have uh, tracery in them and that does appear to be um, Victorian and you have these uh, lovely memorials out here in the in the graveyard and you see the hills up there um, and such peace here such a peaceful little little place um, there's a tiny little village here and the, the road through the valley he heading up in the general direction of uh, Chester and there we are, the little church. You can see at the, the east end here, because you've got the Yale Chapel, it has this double church aspect. But of course, because it's really the Yale Isle, it wasn't a double church. It would have had a, its own altar before the Reformation, but it would have been a chantry. Um, and so the what's now the north, well, the main aisle, the main church, would always have had the, the main altar at the end of it, and still has, you see, that nice, fancier window. So the, the sun's directly above the church, isn't it? Um, can't do much about that. Uh, and the hills there, the hills. So here we are, Bryn Eglois, the church of the Yale family, the church, uh, a church where evangelicals were not welcome in the 18th century. Um, are they welcome today? That's a good question. Um, so here, we, there we are. Well, again, I'll, I'll sign off here just as we come round to the front I'll sign off and we'll see what comes next uh, love I, again obviously the porch is 19th century and provides access for worshippers both the ordinary folk and the Yales well thank you for watching I hope you enjoy this video I certainly enjoyed making it and god willing there'll be some more coming along not from here, I don't think, not from North Wales. This is going to be the last one, I think, on this, this trip. Um, so, again, thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you at this time.